The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Please note... Please note... and I'm doing great and how are all my wrestling people doing out there hopefully everybody's doing wonderful having a good time and yes I know you're all tuned in because you're here to see our very special guest and he's running a few minutes behind but that's okay because we're going to take care of all the house cleaning stuff get your questions in now for Lance at Hawaii he's going to be joining us momentarily here on Fusion this is episode four we're on nice and early so thank you everybody for tuning in Bright and early on your Thursday night for party time with the video bros. The second half of the show will be Ring Respect Radio, where we're going to be talking about Antonio Noki and his career here tonight afterwards. So stay tuned after the interview with Lance at Hawaii to check out that. But in the meantime, if you check right above Papa Smokes, you'll see that we are a rogue affiliate here. And yes, you can click that QR code. It's going to take you right to their site. But in case hey, maybe you don't want to click that QR code, you can always try out that right there. That, that's a good way to go. Or I'm going to throw the ticker on there for you right now. Rogue Energy. And Rogue Energy is an alternative energy source drink. This is better than the energy drinks you're going to find in the store. We're talking about sugar-free, low-calorie, vegan-friendly. This is the stuff you want to be getting your hands on if you are someone who is streaming, you're partying, you're up all night, but you want to stay healthy at the same time. Check out our good friends over at Rogue Energy to find out the best kind of flavors that you could be having there in the in the palm of your very own hands now i also want to mention a little something called ole we got ole it's going to be debuting very very soon papa smokes and i know that there is wonderful things going on with that side of things uh so we will have more information coming from you for you guys very soon in fact ole to everybody joining us in the chat there today included yes mr ed fries who always loves to join us on a thursday night and it's good to see you my friend and yes the swat team has arrived very shortly, he's on his way. Make sure you get your questions here once Lance joins us on screen. It's going to be a fantastic time. But in the meantime and in between time, Papa Smokes, we're here. We're talking fusion. Let's talk a little bit about the upcoming season. We know that Court Bauer has been teasing this uh, upcoming season. We know we're on the cusp of it. It is on the way. It's coming soon. And, you know, our, our guest tonight is going to be a big part of that, the Samoan SWAT team going forward. Uh, what are you looking forward to? The season is going to be starting very soon here. What do you want to see from MLW Fusion coming up? Well, first of all, you called it a tease that Court Bauer has been putting out there. It's it's so much of a tease. I, I just need a date. I want to know when we're getting <laughs> back to this. And, uh, yeah, he's been putting the uh, – tweeting out MLW will return and then a blank space and everything. Oh, come on, man. We want to know. We want our battle riot tapings that we still haven't seen. We got all kinds of stuff to catch up on. And uh, just like we uh, have mentioned before in speculating about the upcoming MLW season, it's always a little bit of a reset. So you never really know what's going to happen and who, uh, what kind of talents they have there. Another thing Court Bauer has been teasing is that 2022 is going to be a big year, and he's talked about signings and introductions and surprises and everything. And from what I understand, uh, there, there are going to be some that will be quite memorable. 
Yeah, I can't wait for it. It's going to be awesome. And a big shout out to Loli. Thank you for joining us, as always, on a Thursday night. And also for sending out all the love and making sure that everybody knows about the Video Bros on a Thursday night. We couldn't do this kind of stuff without the help of yourself and the many other people that have been so very, very helpful in getting the name of the Video Bros out there and joining us on Thursday night's party time. It is awesome. Can't wait. We know that Lance is going to be joining us here momentarily, Papa Smokes. But anybody in the chat have any questions for myself and Papa Smokes regarding MLW or anything wrestling related that we can chat about before our special guest get here tonight? Smash those questions right over there in the chat, for course. And uh, if you're following us on Twitch, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a sub. I want to give a shout out to a few people here right now, Pop Spokes, that have uh, been very, very helpful in uh, getting our name out there as well, too. I've been reached out by a gentleman by the name of Brian. Go check him out, twitch.tv slash 40, sorry, 40, the number 40, 40. Y-R-O-L-D bot on Twitch. This guy he has a lot of gaming streams, and he's also helping out small streamers to get their names out there. So a big shout out to him. And if you're looking for a little bit of uh, creativity, graphic design, stuff like that at a fairly reasonable price, uh, go check out Ayla Blaze. Uh, she is somebody who does some great graphic design for Twitch streamers and stuff like that, and she's got a great uh, deal that you guys can get in on. I said I would give them a big shout out here because they are fans of the video bros, and they're helping to support the two of us so i wanted to give them a shout and a shout out to all our fellow streamers that also do streams throughout the week and i wanted to mention you know from you know different people like uh chris parish and astrid and ed who you know did an awesome uh, stream on tuesday night with taking over uh fantastic job that they did over there uh to the you know stuff that we're throwing out on sunday between myself and chris Parrish and the special guests we've had and uh, you know we got uh, mel and andre that do the chop talk uh, show each and every week and just so many great things that you can catch uh but we do have a question coming in from ed what ml star w star would fit best in wwe AEW, not MGIF, Impact, and New Japan. Um, I, I'm going to go right ahead and say it, that, uh, you know, Jacob Fought 2, I think, takes this accolade in all aspects, especially if you go on the WWE side. I think, as much as I really am enjoying Solo Sokoa and like his work, I think that that position filled by Jacob Fought 2 would have a better blow-off in the end, especially if they had him as the muscle and inevitably have him turn and imagine the match Roman Reigns versus Jacob fought two down the line. I mean, that is a star making match right there. If you ask me, Pop smokes, how about yourself? Yeah, I was thinking of uh, someone just a little more uh, unusual to pick. I would go with Richard holiday. I think this guy could be a star in any of the big companies. I would say, uh, uh, you know, I'm not even worried about him going to impact. I think in AEW or WWE with the promo skills, the look, the physique, and the in-ring skill, Richard Holiday would be a sure winner. I don't disagree with you. Richard Holiday is a fantastic uh, wrestler uh, promo as well. We saw a lot of great work with him and Alexander Hammerstone to finish off last season of MLW. I'd imagine there's only great things come the way of Richard Holiday with this brand new season of uh, Fusion coming up. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, I have to say, I'm, I am I don't really like making these prognostications just because I don't want Vince or Tony Khan picking off our uh, good talent <laughs> in MLW as soon as they get good. It's like being a fan of a Canadian hockey team. You can watch them get better and better, but you know their big players are just going to be plucked to the big money teams in the big cities in the South. and it's It hurts the game overall. I think the same thing in wrestling, but, uh, you know, we're just doing a little fantasy, having a little fun here, so uh, I'll, I'll participate. You know, it's inevitable. It's going to happen eventually, and again, MLW tends to be that stepping stone for a lot of great wrestlers as they make their way up to the big leagues. We know that they got to make money. Hey, everybody's got to put food on the table. And boom, Carl, number one, you bet. Turnbuckle Studios, also on Tuesday nights, a fantastic show. Uh, Carl was also joined by uh, Joe this week as well, too. Uh, Corporate Joe, Mighty Joe, whatever he goes by, he is also a great personality on screen. Join Carl each and every week, a fantastic show. Go check out Turnbuckle Studios today and make sure you to like and subscribe over there too and boom it's ryan basser 69 my man evening my boys glad you could join us my my friend really happy to have you here and again as you all know stay tuned because very shortly we are going to have the man himself lance anawahi joining us here and get your questions in for lance there's going to be a lot to say and do 
when he joins us on the screen. Uh, is Holiday and Alicia still in a program together? When we last left off with MLW Fusion, the answer is yes. She was in the corner of Richard Holiday during the championship match in that at that time. So again, where they've left off, yes, I don't know with current tapings if there's any swerves or anything like that that we're unaware of. That we're going to have to find out as the new season unfolds. <laughs> And Ed saying, hmm, tables like the head of table. All right, we're getting into the bloodline puns now, aren't we here? But yeah, as far as as far as I know, right, uh, Pop Smokes, Holiday, and Alicia were still in that program uh, leading into the finish of the last season. Yeah, yeah, and you never know what happens when the new season starts. Like I say, they kind of hit the reset button, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they kept these two together. They had a they had a nice chemistry together, and it, it worked. Uh, uh, Holiday the uh, the son of the lawyer, the the rich boy, and everything, and then he's got now this snotty ex uh, interviewer girl on his arm. I think they made a good pair. They look good together, and uh, they both have good uh, mic skills. So uh, I would like to see more of them together for sure. Yeah, sky's the limit for them when you put those two together. I think it worked wonders. Again, I, I'm curious to see if Richard Holiday stays in the title picture, if he's going to have any matches coming up. We have seen some reveals of matches that are coming up, especially with the Philadelphia show. It was announced that we are going to be seeing uh, a, a last man standing match between the judge, EJ and Duca, and Alexander Hammerstone. Man, that one's got some epic, epic, you know, big guy, you know, feel to it, Papa Smokes. I, I don't know what to think all i know is that match could end up being one of the more brutal matches of hammerstone's uh, title run so far for sure and uh, when they sign a match and announce a match like this it kind of makes me think what did i miss like how, they were buddies the last time we saw weren't they or not not exactly buddies but uh, uh friendly allies and they had a, a match where they were tag team partners or in a uh was that in war chamber maybe uh, where they were on the same team yeah. And uh, they seem to have a, uh, a a good relationship with each other. But uh, you know that this is wrestling and that uh, uh, EJ and Duca is one half of the tag team champions. But um, he's got eyes on the big gold too, as, as every wrestler in every federation does. So uh, Hammerstone is not uh, beneath his attention as a champion. So... Uh, uh, having it a stipulation match, one as brutal as that, makes me wonder what happened in the meantime. But again, we have to catch up with what's happened at the tapings we haven't seen. Yeah, we really do. And again, uh, I'm not surprised by the fact that it's going to happen. We know that Nduka was clamoring for a tra championship opportunity. He said that he came to the aid of Hammerstone. He was there to help fend off Contra, <laughs> put himself out there. And as of right now, up to the end of the season that has aired, we know that EJ and Duca is undefeated, if I'm not mistaken. I don't remember. At least he hasn't been beat by pinfall or submission in an MLW ring. So one year in, one season in, this guy has been tearing through the competition. It has been fantastic. It is a wonderful thing. And speaking of wonderful things, it's that time of the show, everybody. The time you've been waiting for. Enough of myself and Pop Smokes. Here he is, our very special guest, Lance Anawahi, joining us here tonight. Thank you so much. It is an absolute honor to have you on Fusion here tonight, sir. Oh, no problem, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we're really happy to have you. And again, we're going to have some questions coming in from our live audience, clearly. But uh, we just want to say, you know, it's it's fantastic. We've been running down some MLW stuff here. We know that you're heavily involved with MLW. And uh, first going to turn it over to, to my cohort here, Pop Smokes. I know he's got a plethora of questions that he wants to pick your brain on. Oh, sounds for great. sure. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Awesome, Lance. First of all, thanks again for me for doing this. It's a real thrill having a member of one of wrestling's royal families on here and uh, really enjoying this. Um, I wanted to uh, talk to you about uh, Afa and Sika. Now, Afa is your grandfather, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So they're one of the first uh, members of the uh, Samoan uh, Anawai family and uh, and uh, they also have a, a huge legacy in old style WWWF under Vince McMahon Sr. I was wondering how much of this stuff you have watched and how much of uh, the ring style and and uh, and uh, pr presentation of Afa and Sika that you've seen and that you've uh, taken as an influence in your own style. Man, I really haven't like watched honestly a lot of my 
grandfather and my uncle, like, the only stuff I really, like, watched was when my dad was tagging with them, when my Uncle Sika got hurt and my dad became Wild Small number three. I seen him, like, uh, wrestle Andre the Giant and uh, – I seen Tony Atlas and Rocky Johnson. Like I seen all that, and their style is just completely. I want to say it's different from mine. I think I'm. I wrestle honestly different than my whole family because I like to basically fly. I like to take flight. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, just like learning from my grandfather because my grandfather is one that trained me along with my father. Man, just his knowledge and knowledge from my whole family because we've been in the business. Like, in WWE for, what, 45 years going on? Like, there always has been a member of my family there. So I always get knowledge from all of them, and I just love to pick all their brains. And uh, before anything, uh, Astrid now joining us in the chat as well tonight. Astrid, good to see you. Get your questions in if you got any for Lance. Uh, you did mention about uh, you, you're watching your dad wrestle and stuff like that. And again, I, I grew up a big fan of, uh, of your father, the Head Shrinkers, wonderful tag team. Uh, um, just wondering, at what point uh, did you kind of take the interest in professional wrestling, start watching, start wanting to get involved just like the rest of your family? When did that become the desire of you? So actually, when I was younger, uh... I would always travel with my dad, like do independent shows, and I like to get involved because I was seven, six, seven years old. Man, like following The Rock, X Pac was always one of my favorites growing up. Uh, my dad will always do a spot in the ring where I'll hurry up, I'll come in, I'll hit the people's elbow, or I'll do the Bronco Buster. Man, I just, I, and I was six, seven years old doing a 450 splash. So I remember one time I did an independent show. And I was tiny, man, and I hit a 450 splash onto my dad's opponent, and my dad laid on top of me and covered me for the one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a wonderful experience. Uh, Papa Swogs, I'm going to turn it back over to you, my man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were talking on one of our recent episodes about uh, family legacies in wrestling, and uh, we were uh, we were talking about uh, some of the other important families in wrestling, such as the Funks, such as uh, uh, in MLW, uh, Los Parks. They've got a family going there. Uh, uh, various uh, family legacies. How do you see yours, and how do you see your place in it? Um, I, I I know that you're not the youngest uh, wrestler from your family at this point, also, but. Um, What's your place in it, and, and how important is the past family legacy to you? Man, uh, out of all those families, a lot of respect for all of them. You know, like you said, you got the Los Parks, man. You got MLW. You got the Von Ericks. You got uh, – we just did a show at Chavo Guerrero. You got the Guerreros who will always be up there. Oh, nice. uh, the Hearts, man. It's – but to me, honestly, I think my family is on top. Like, we produce the most wrestlers of everyone. And as you see in WWE right now, man, they're they're rolling right now, man. They're, they're the ones. <laughs> but, uh, man, I see myself, man. I've been doing it, what, going on 13 years. And I'm just – I'm still learning. I learned from my cousin who I tag with now, Jacob Fatu, who's killing the independent scene. Um, I think we're all growing. He's learning from me. I'm learning from him. And even my uncle, like, we, we still learn from each other. So hopefully one day I'll be able to make it to WWE. But, man, I'm I'm locked in for multi-year with MLW, which, man, I, I'm glad. I'm happy, man. Like, I, I'm riding the road. I got my cousins, uh, Roman, the Usos, man, they're all riding together. Now me and Jacob are on the road together, man. And we love it, man. Now we got some uh, we got some audience questions coming in. I'm gonna get to it in a minute. But you, again, you mentioned WWE, and you did have a few spots that you did have with them. And I know that uh, somebody reached out to me, wanted me to ask this question. Uh, between working with WWE and MLW for those type of television tapings or the live setting, what is the big difference between the two in terms of how uh, you go about your your matches and your promos uh, between MLW and the WWE? Man, there's really no difference, honestly. Um... Like, they tell us what they want. They let us, you know, we make the magic happen. Uh, they just they just give us our bullet points of what they want. And from there, man, we just like to have fun. Like, I know in Atlanta, man, we just killed it. Uh, they said, go out there, man. 
basically murder these guys, and that's what we did. <laughs> and uh, but have fun at the same time, because you know we're the new era Samoan SWAT team. So it was the savages, but man, we like to party, we like to have fun. We we're it was like a Mexican festival, man. We were over there <laughs> drinking, like everything, man. It was just a good time. <laughs> but honestly, between the two, yeah, they're pretty much because Court Bauer, who runs uh, the owner of MLW, he worked for WWE for quite a few years. So I think he just carried it over what he learned from there to MLW. Yeah, you bet. Now, that question actually came in from Ed Fries, as you see on screen. Uh, he had actually uh, messaged me previously, so again, I got that question in there. But we do have another one coming in from our good friend Carl at Turnbuckle Studios. He says, hello, Lance. Carl here. How does training with family differ from training with others? Did you feel it was harder with family as a, des uh, as a desire not to disappoint? Man, Turnbuckle Studios, man. Honestly, training with my father was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got beat up, man. You know, he didn't take it easy just because I was his son. He, he pushed me harder. I had to go. I was I was the first one in training, the last one to leave training, man. It was he he wanted everything to be perfect because at a young age, I was 18 years old when I first got started. Like when I started taking it serious, and I was still in high school, and he it was either baseball or wrestling, and I just wanted to go straight wrestle. And, man, he just pushed me every day after school, meet me at the gym, right at the training center. Man, we're going bumping. We're doing everything. And he just wanted to perfect my craft because eventually, two years, I had my first uh, extra work with WWE after two years being in the business. So I just wanted to keep it going. And then I had a few tryouts. So, man, my dad is still teaching me. And then for a while, I was training with Tommy Dreamer in uh, New York. So, when I was up there with him, man, even the knowledge he gave me, like it's it's different styles between my dad and Tommy, but not really because they both like the strong style, honestly. <laughs> but Tommy is more into the new school and my dad is very old school. For sure. And speak, speaking of your dad, now I got to bring this up because I mean, we've, we're MLW fans. We've watched all the battle rides. And by the way, I've heard that you are the only person in MLW to be <laughs> featured in all four of the battle rides. But I got to go back to the very first one, which actually featured your dad in that matchup. And I believe that you uh, took it upon yourself to eliminate <laughs> him. Now, what was the mindset there? Like, did you, did you think maybe you could go a little bit further with your dad on your side? Or was it just a, a mindset of, I need to set a standard here that I, I'm the new blood. I'm the one that needs to take control here. And that's why you had to take that moment to throw him over the top. Yeah, that's exactly what it was, man. You know, every man for herself. Like, uh, the, this newest one didn't air yet, but you'll see <laughs> what happens there also. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, my dad, man, uh, he just turned his back real quick, man. Because if it wasn't me throwing him out, somebody probably would have. And I'm, I think he'd rather me than uh, somebody random. <laughs> Well, at least he took it well. Uh, I'm going to go back over to you, Papa Smokes, uh, for your next question. Hey, does this work if I turn my phone sideways, too? I, I would hope so. <laughs> you give it a shot for sure. I just don't yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, yeah. okay. There we go. Look sharp. <laughs> well, I was thinking in the battle right. Oh, nice. There we go. Oh, nice. nice. Beautiful. <laughs> Retro wear. <laughs> Uh, I was thinking your dad might be mad at you if you had the chance to eliminate him and you didn't, right? That might be against your all the lessons he taught you. Oh, yeah, exactly, man. You know, I, I've wrestled my own family. I, like, I wrestled solo before. Uh, I wrestled uh, Alpha Junior before. So, you know, you know, blood, blood is thick. But, man, you know, I'm trying to prove something here. <laughs> <laughs> got to carve your own legacy. Uh, oh, yeah. Got to Got a question coming in from Ed Fries. He says, if you could tag with a member of your family other than your dad or Jacob Fatu, who would you pick? Um, man, you know, I got to go with uh, the head of the table, man. <laughs> I got to go with acknowledge him. I, I got to go with Roman, man. You know, uh, it's just not for the push, but, man, just to be in the ring with him. Like, when I did that match with uh, – Shane McMahon and he came out to the to save me at the end. Uh, I definitely thought like there was definitely talks in the back talking about possibly me and Roman versus Shane and Drew at the next show, 
and it ended up not happening, but that's all right, man. But you know, uh, that's definitely one person I would love to tag with. You know, Still we got to put out on a Hawaii strength right there. <laughs> Well, and hopefully if he, he lasts out your MLW contract, maybe a still possibility of that oh, uh, happening yeah. one of these days. So. You never know, man. We acknowledge him. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Bob Smokes, back to you, sir. Yeah, I was going to ask you about, um, you've got the Samoan SWAT team version two going right now and uh, with three members, uh, with yourself, Jacob Fatu, and Juicy Finale. And uh, I wondered what your guys' uh, goals are with Samoan SWAT team. Obviously, you'd like a, a tag team title shot with the champs uh, right now, or as far as I know, anyway, being EJ and Duca and uh, Calvin Tankman. Yep. But there are a number of other uh, tough tag teams in the in the division. How do you guys uh, approach this, and how do you see yourself maybe getting up to getting a title shot? Man, we're ready. Like. Everybody they threw at us, man, we just destroyed, man. And we keep telling MLW, this is what we want. Uh, uh, EJ and Calvin are still the tag team champs. So, uh, yeah, man, we we definitely want the gold. And right now, man, we're in talks with uh, AAA possibly coming up soon. Uh, just a man, you know, trios is big now. So, Especially got Jacob, man, and Juicy, man. Juicy's a big boy, man. Oh, that boy yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah, dope. man, we're just ready to rock. We don't, we don't care who steps in the ring with us. We ready to go. Perfect. Awesome. Those getting... three, those three man teams can be pretty tough too because you've got an extra guy on the outside, or you can, uh, you can hoodwink your opponents by uh, not letting them know which of the two guys are going to be in the match that night. That that could be in your advantage as well. Oh, yeah. And if they want to go more than trios, man, we got more than trios in our blood. So we good. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get to the next question uh, that Astrid's got here as well, too, because you say about there's more, the, uh, more out there. I believe there's some younger members of the family that maybe haven't uh, quite broken through yet. Like, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Jacob Fatu's younger brother is starting to uh, make his way into the round. Yeah, Journey Fatu, man, you know, he's definitely making moves out there on the West Coast, and we're trying to get him in an MLW with us to make things happen. You know, you never know just when somebody else will show up in our family. <laughs> but yeah, Journey's the youngest one. Uh, Solo is one of the youngest ones. Uh, and then I think it's pretty much me, so... Oh, perfect. And we're going to go over to this next question from Astrid Bizarro. Uh, says, hey, Lance, anyone in your family you would like to go against as opposed to tag teaming with them? Uh, go against. Uh, for fun? Uh, I don't know, man. I just, <laughs> I never, I always thought about doing a father-son match. <laughs> Yeah. So that that's one person, you know. I'll probably get beat, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I just have be... to run circles around my dad. But yeah, I definitely would love to be in the ring with my father. I tagged with him plenty of times. Uh, but yeah, just to be able, I don't even care, man. He could throw me around. I'll just have a lot of fun with my father, man. Because I'm not sure how many uh, father son matches there actually were. Oh, I'd love to see that. Uh, hopefully, maybe Court Bauer will check this out and uh, make that free map <laughs> one of these days. So, uh, Bob Smokes, you still got some questions for us. I know you do. Yeah, yeah. You just brought up uh, Court Bauer's name. Uh, as I understand it, uh, some members of your family uh, have had a relationship with him uh, going back some years, back to his time working in the WWE and all that. What's uh, that relationship like, and what's your relationship like with Court Bauer? Man, our relationship is family, man. Like, uh, Court always says on, like, uh, all the podcasts and Sirius XM that he does, man. Like, my family broke him into the business. He used to uh, sleep in my grandfather's basement. He tells a story about him uh, sleeping on the old bed that Yokozuna used to sl sleep on. And it was, like, folded in half. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, man, like, every time, like, we're in Philly – so my father lives in Philly, and whenever MLW goes down there, we always invite Court over for fam family functions. You want to cook out. It don't matter, man. It's always love and respect right there. That's awesome. Beautiful. Uh, Pop Smokes, you got anything else, anything else for Lance? 
Um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk a, a little bit about the future. Uh, you signed a deal and you're signed talent with MLW now. Is that for a couple of years? And, and how, how do you think those years look to you? What kind of plans do you have for MLW uh, in the long term? Yes, I did. Uh, recently, this past June, I did sign a multi-year deal. Um, it's two years, uh, three years poss- option. Um, but yeah, I definitely see myself, you know, holding that tag team gold very shortly. So hopefully we do that. And from there, man, uh, I'm ready to just keep climbing. I'm ready to wrestle the best tag teams in the world. Don't matter who it is. Like I said before, um, especially juicy. I know juicy's young and hungry, so he's ready to go. Yeah, I got to say, looking forward to seeing that happen as well, too. And a big fan of what you're doing with the Samoan SWAT team. I mean, when this came together and finally revealed on MLW television, uh, Pop Smokes and I got to talk about it on the show. And and we just had a wonderful time. Like, you guys, I mean, you guys are tough as nails, first of all. You go out there, kick some major ass inside the ring. But then I think it was the segment where you guys uh, got the best of uh, Duran outside the uh, the Philly Arena there, the 2300 Arena, which is just absolutely remarkable. I mean, there we go love that segment that was fantastic yeah man i told them man let's have some fun with this like i know we're the small swat team like man to me they were always known as the the originals like my my father my uncles uh rikishi and tonga kid man they were always the savages but man we could show that we could be savage fun we could have a good time all together uh shit we have fun kicking butt so uh (laughs) But yeah, our Polynesian chop shop, man. We just go out there, man. We just steal it from you and we sell it right back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic segment. Absolutely. And we got uh, Turnbuckle Studios, Carl, coming in. Uh, what, if anything, do you feel the wrestling community could do to offer you more respect on the Samoan legacies, past, present, and future? If anything, do you feel? Sorry, I'm just rereading the question. Oh, it's all good. Yeah, all good man. <laughs> do you feel the wrestling? More respect on this one, man. So right now, man, uh, I think, you know, with the whole bloodline and everything where they're at, uh, they're definitely opening the eyes to like how far our family is. And um, basically, I don't even know if I could break it, but uh, (laughs) WWE is running an A&E show on the Samoan dynasty. Uh, We're doing all the filming. uh, They're making their ways all around the, the country, state, everywhere, man, just to make sure they get every member in there. Uh, so, yeah, man, the, I think we have total support from the whole wrestling community, and everybody cannot wait to see this documentary. Yeah, that'll be an awesome documentary. I got to ask right now, and I don't know if you're you're able to say anything, but I'm going to ask anyway. Philly tapings are coming up at the end of the month here. I know that it's been announced that, Fatu's got his hands full with Leo Rush. Is there anything on the card for yourself? Uh, at the moment, uh, there isn't. But we are there. We are on the card. We don't know exactly what we're doing. But, man, uh, I know my cousin Jacob. He's wrestling Leo Rush. I don't know if that's the first time. But, man, I wrestled Leo Rush quite a few times when he was just uh, getting started in North Carolina, West Virginia. And, man, he can – that boy's quick. <laughs> But sure man, is. Jacob's pretty quick for his size too. Yeah. But man, uh, they did announce uh, EJ versus Hammerstone, so I guess the tag team championship match won't happen here. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe man, they can do it double is duty. A taping. They can do double duty, so I'm that's cool a, with yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, um, that's that's all I got. But Pop Smokes, anything else from you and anybody in the comment section? Any last questions before we uh, let Lance uh, move on with his evening here? No, I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about MLW, and I, it's just a real thrill to see you thriving there and getting a good deal. And I'm excited for the future of uh, of you guys in the Samoan SWAT team, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you rip up the tag team ranks there. I, I think you're going to have the belts uh, sooner rather than later. Oh, thank you, man. You know, like I said, man, we ready. Uh, we're ready to carry the gold wherever we go. We're not just going to carry the MLW when we win, if we win, man. No, when we win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to carry everywhere we go, man. Don't matter if it's AAA, Japan, 
Uh, Puerto Rico, man, we're just making towns and ready to carry them with pride. All right. And uh, we're going to go one last question then before we let you plug your socials and anything you got coming up. Uh, Ed wants to know, what did you learn working uh, with uh, – I don't know if the bro man, uh, bro man, not sure With who bro man is there, yet, but uh, Shane and Drew in the raw segment that you spoke about together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, man, uh, one thing I did learn is man, uh, Shane is very stiff. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe nah, that, but man, honestly, it was it, it was fun. Uh, so I got the call about. So I just had my WWE tryout. It was 2019. I had my tryout in, uh, I want to say, April. It was the week before Mania. And I got. they told me they don't have nothing for me. And then they ended up calling me the uh, two days before that Raw and said, hey, we're, we need you to fly out to Kansas City. So they booked my flight, got my rental car. Everything was set up. And they flew me from Philadelphia to Kansas City. And I still had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I was in Kansas City. Uh, so I show up to the building and Shane goes, uh, it's me and you tonight. I said, oh, man. <laughs> but, man, Shane, man, he was cool. Like, he, he stuck by me the whole time, asked if I had any questions. Uh, we just talked about it. We went to catering together. We sat down about – just kept talking, man. It was not even about our match. It was just about life and wrestling, our families. And uh, it was definitely, like – a very humble experience I had with it. And then Drew, man, that man's chops on the outside of the ring. That marked my test. Then he slammed me into the stairs. And then a uh, belly to belly over, man. It was <laughs> it was definitely uh, a learning experience. <laughs> So it sounds like quite the ride, definitely. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna save that as being the last of the questions here. Uh, we definitely want to thank you for coming on the show. Uh, but before you go, anything you got coming up? Uh, any shows coming up? Or, or your socials? We've got uh, on the ticker down below. But uh, let the fans know where they can find you. Man, you can catch me on MLW shows. Uh, we're in Philadelphia, October thirtieth. Um, and then another MLW date to be announced shortly. You just never know, and you catch us on the MLW, the new season of MLW Fusion, also coming very soon. Uh, right now, I'm liver, limiting my bookings due to MLW, and you know, I got a family, I got kids, I got, <laughs> I got real jobs. <laughs> but man, you know, uh, yeah, you just keep catching me on MLW, grinding, and hopefully carrying titles soon. And right there's all my social media, so hit me a follow. For sure, yeah. Hit uh, hit Lance a follow with the social media links down below. And uh, th we just want to say a big thank you for joining myself and Pop Smokes on the show. It's been an absolute honor to have you as a guest. And again, all the love and support going forward. We're going to be backing you the whole way, cheering you on and making sure that uh, we're right there uh, to celebrate when you finally put the gold over your shoulder. <laughs> thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it, man. Anything y'all need from me, man, just let me know. Y'all know how to reach me. Sorry I wasn't there last week, man. I was all sick. Good. But all good. We all uh... <laughs> We all good, man, and I appreciate it. Yeah, anytime. You're always welcome to come join us at any time on a Thursday night. Man, We'd be happy even to have when you, you need back. other family, just let me know. No. Uh, <laughs> you, can tell, you can tell cousin Jacob to, to come join us anytime. We would have a problem. Ju you. Juicy too. Juicy too. <laughs> I got you for sure, man. Awesome. We appreciate it. Thank yep. you very much. Take care of yourself, and we'll talk very soon, my man. Yep. Have a great evening. Take care. Thanks, Lance. Yep. Nice. All right, well, that was an awesome time with Lance uh, joining us here today. So uh, thank, thankful that he was able to join us. Again, everybody, that is going to wrap up our fusion portion of the show.